No Shapiro way. said that. Yeah, he has. I don't believe. Fuentes told me that, and that that's a big reason why he doesn't want to debate him because if that comes down to identity politics. If you believe in Israel, and if you, bro, you're Nick is one of the biggest identity politics people in the world. What do you mean? How? What Christianity? White nationalism? What do you mean? He talks he's, about he's race. Not a, he's not a he's not a white nationalist, Destiny. He's a Christian nationalist. One guy. of the biggest points that he debates is the fundamental changing of the character of the United States after the 1965 Hart Seller Immigration Act. That it changed the character of the country because we got so many brown people because of stuff like familial immigration. This is one of his biggest talking points. Go and ask him that if he could restrict immigration from non-white people, or would he do it? He's going to tell you yes. That this country should look more like white Christian people. Ask him about the founding stock of America. Ask about what the founders intended the United States to look like in terms of like racial demeanor. Can I ask you a hard question or hard questions? Yeah, I'm not, this is gonna sound like I'm grilling you, but I'm, I'm truly just interested. Um, okay. Do you believe me when I say that or do you not believe me? When it seems like anti-Semitic rhetoric in the United States is like on a huge upswing and then like you, people like you are kind of like being responsible for driving more of it. I don't know, I just think it's a little bit sad. And a little you think bit I'm scared. pushing anti-Semitism? Yes, absolutely. Do you know that um, this is the first year uh, I'm not going home for Christmas. They don't, my, like, I, I have a uh, blue hair, woke family, kind of like you, and they they don't mess with my politics at all. I mean, it doesn't take a blue hair people to not want to f*** your politics. <laughs> like, the yes It's never got to the point, it's never got to the point where I've been, like, uninvited for Christmas. Yeah, but has it ever gotten to the point where you're, like, publicly defending people saying they love Hitler? Like, that's probably a pretty big, <laughs> that's probably a pretty big departure from stuff you've normally been involved in. I support what Jesus would do. On Jesus' birthday, Jesus would want everybody to be loved. And I tweeted, uh, I love Jews and Nazis, which is what Jesus would do. Jesus would love everybody. I agree with that statement. I like the fact that he broke that final wall of the woke mob saying that. I'm not saying, I'm not a, a I don't Nazi think the problem. And I, I don't think the problem is just saying we should love everybody. I think the problem is saying like, I love Hitler and I don't think the Holocaust really happened. I think that's more the say, issue. I didn't say that. You I, might I not have, that. but that's what Yang said. So when you defend parts of his statements, you're kind of implicitly buying onto like the other parts as well. No, that's, that's not true. But people don't really dig into that. And so what's happening, I actually recently, I don't know if you saw the Daily Beast wrote an article calling me racist for joining Ye's campaign, which is absolutely crazy. Like I, I understand where Elon's coming from because this has a, an effect on people's lives people who are so brainwashed and and plugged into this these ideas they see uh sneeko joins uh racist youtuber joins yay's campaign even though i'm on rumble they're like oh my god they're destroying our name and they are they're putting all this they're just trying to pay me as a bad like who if it was a white dude writing this article calling me racist who the f do you think i'd be racist to if i'm joining yay's campaign it, it's probably it's jews crazy. i think it's probably what people are thinking <laughs> Yeah, but those the, the Jews would also argue that they're not a race. The same Ben Shapiro argues that oh well, Jews aren't a race. They're they're it's a religion. That's the biggest misconception. Even though well, they are no, a race. there's has, it, there's no shot. Shapiro has said that. I can't possibly believe that. No, Shapiro way. said that. Yeah, he has. I don't believe you. Fuentes told me that, and that that's a big reason why he doesn't want to debate him because if that comes down to identity politics. If you believe in Israel, and if you, bro, you're Nick is one of the biggest identity politics people in the world. What do you mean? How? What Christianity? White nationalism? What do you mean? He talks he's, about he's race. Not a, he's not a. He's not a white nationalist, Destiny. He's not. He's a Christian nationalist. One not. of the biggest points that he debates is the fundamental changing of the character of the United States after the 1965 Hart Seller Immigration Act. That it changed the character of the country because we got so many brown people because of stuff like familial immigration. This is one of his biggest talking points. Go and ask him that if he could restrict immigration from non-white people, or would he do it? He's going to tell you yes. That this country should look more like white Christian people. Ask him about the founding stock of America. Ask him about what the founders intended the United States to look like in terms of like racial demeanor. You should, uh, seriously, like ask him. I don't these aren't even like tricky questions. Just ask him what he'll say. Well, like, what do you think? If he thinks that like black and brown people intrinsically have like lower IQ than white people, why would he even want him here? Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense if the fact that he's the communications director for uh, the first dark skin, the first like actual black president ever, that doesn't make sense. A like, black why? guy that's talking about how much he loves Hitler? That doesn't make sense? <laughs> Yeah, well, th that wouldn't. If wouldn't that make it? Doesn't wants, that actually make perfect sense? Doesn't white. that make more sense than literally anything else in the world? Isn't that the perfect thing that makes sense? Okay, if he wants the country to to be perfectly white, then he wouldn't be the communications director for a black, the first black president. Do you, Do you think there's anybody that is as popular as Kanye that Nick Fuentes could work with right now? Trump. 
Do, I don't think Trump wants to work with Fuentes. Didn't Trump publicly disavow Fuentes? He, he disavowed him, but at the dinner, he said uh, he was really impressed with Nick, and he said that Nick's really smart. He was complimenting him a lot. Uh, yeah, I think but he after, was complimenting after him like— the GOP was disavowing him, he was like, oh, this guy had any— he, I don't really think he actually disavowed him. He just Hold said on. he didn't know. You he think, didn't know that Fuentes was he showing He didn't up know dinner. anything about Fuentes. Fuentes probably showed up and was well-spoken, and Trump being Trump was like, oh, yeah, he seems like a nice kid. He knew about Fuentes. He knew that he knew he put the face to that guy's name. He knew that he was leading some of the stop the steal and he was at the he was at January 6th, but he didn't know exactly who the person was, but he was impressed with him. And I think that in an, another circumstance, Trump, Trump would benefit greatly from having from having Fuentes on. But basically, the point is, like, the the fake news mob is 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 very strong. And, and now it's happening. I mean, it happened to you, too. And I'm surprised you didn't shift at all, especially like when I mean, I'll go back to us getting played in the Senate, but they, they have a. Uh, they completely have a monolith on groupthink and look like it, it's it's affected my personal life like now i'm at the point where now i'm streaming on christmas talking to you talking because a lot of people in my personal life they're like i'm racist they don't want to associate with me but that essentially if you go down it, it, go, it comes from a place of love it's love speech loving everybody i don't love um, blaming the jews and talking about how the holocaust is not real is not coming from a place of loving everybody i don't i don't agree with that that's not what I that's believe fine if you don't agree happened. with that but that's what uh fuentes talks about that's what kanye's been talking about it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not that's what they're saying and that's what people are reacting and responding to yeah i'm wondering what, what's your predictions for for that campaign for what yay's campaign yeah i think he'll get bored and drop it in a month or two but i could be wrong but that's what he did last time he was running for president do you think that how do you think it's going to change public discourse because nobody's talked about this there's nobody been that vocal about jews since hitler um i mean it's making everybody a lot more worried about like anti-semitic shit in the united states so it's having that impact at least <laughs> um but like in terms of lasting changes and shit i have no idea i don't know you, none of the none of the like anti-holocaust stuff that doesn't none of that gives you pause for concern or anything I understand questioning it. I understand people's apprehension, the fact that you have to say six million, you have to say six million. But um, one of the statements that like, that triggers me, and I don't get triggered often, but like saying, uh, I don't care about your dead grandma, or I don't care about your, your dead, like there's, these people are still alive, you know? There, there's people that survived it that are still around to this day. I, I think that's, that's um, a bit insensitive. And e even a lot of people in my chat would disagree with that. But imagine going up to a black person and say, oh, I don't care about your, your dead slave family. I think it's the same thing. Okay. Um, geez. Damn. He's what? Your factory game? Uh, no, just, <laughs> just the, the wild path your life has taken. It's just... Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot since I first spoke to you. Like, it's it's been a it's been a wild year. Like, what what have your end of year reflections? But this is this has been by far the craziest year of my life. Like, I'm, I was I've been doing a lot of reflecting, thinking back. Like when I first spoke to you, I was a brokey in Brooklyn, just like like kind of talking about like still doing YouTube stuff like that. Since I first talked to you, I've met Andrew Tate. I've met Yay. Part of this like woke mob came after me, canceled by big tech. Um, distance myself from like a lot of people don't want to associate with me anymore it's been a why it's been by far the most wild year of my life and part of like that first conversation was like the like the first domino but to end up here now it's like anybody in your chat too can, can you like imagine being in that in that position like what do you what's your end of year reflections like you've been streaming for a long time mm -hmm. is, is this been an abnormal year or is this regular um i mean every year it gets a little bit more crazy than the last it's just kind of how it goes what do you, I'm just curious, and I'm not like saying, because I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you think I'm wrong and I think you're wrong, which is fine. Um, I understand the difference in opinion. But like, what do you ever worry, or what do you do personally to like, keep yourself from falling down just like a really bad hole of like, fuck, I might be completely wrong on everything. And like realizing that like, too late. Do you ever worry about that? Or do you ever think about that? No, I never. Re wrong about what? A anything, everything. And then what what what's one thing that you you think that I could consider being wrong about? Um, it's it's not it's 
it's not so much like disagreeing about a particular thing. So like for me personally, one of the biggest fears that I have in life, because I'm a streamer, um, so I have a fan base that has a vested interest in, and, and I could have a vested interest in having a certain political opinion, right? Have you ever heard, have you ever heard of the term audience capture? No. Um, audience capture is like, let's say that I give a whole bunch of like ultra blue pill takes like all day, every day. Um, well, what's gonna happen is my audience is gonna come to expect me to say that. And so what if I run into a problem in the future to where like I wanna give a political take about something and I don't agree with the blue pill shit, but now I feel like I'm forced to because like my because audience, audience wants me to. Yeah, that's called audience capture. Oh no, I have that all the time. I, I, I go back and forth my chat. My chat saying like Waliban, W Taliban, Whitler every single day. I had um a Jewish woman on yesterday and like the chat was just mm -hmm. um a lot of it a lot of it's trolling because Rumble's a free speech platform, so people are able to say whatever the f they want. But like people are, you know, being like <laughs> like she's a she's a Satanist, she's the devil, she's a succubus, and I, I openly disagree with them on that, but I, I think it's good to have back and forth. Um and I, I don't think that's ever gonna happen because Part of my brand is, is being able to, to, to learn and to add information, to go back and forth and to, to change my opinion about things. Um, I like to actively grow and learn on my streams. I, no, I don't, I don't see myself getting myself boxed in in there. And I don't think I hold any like hardcore, if, if you look like to the core of my beliefs, it's like I, I try to follow God and I don't trust people who want to control me. So I, our first discussion was about how much we trust the government, you trust the government and I don't. I ultimately my worldview is down to the fact that people who want to keep me controlled and people who want more money do not have the best interests of the population in mind. They want us to be controlled and they, they want to keep us as pawns. And I, I don't see myself ever changing that belief because that just makes sense if you look where the money goes. That's where you find the truth. If you follow the money, you can see where the truth lies. And I don't see that ever changing. Okay, so do you mind if I, can I ask you a hard question or hard questions? Yeah, I'm not, this is gonna sound like I'm grilling you, but I'm, I'm truly just interested. Um, okay. Do you believe me when I say that or do you not believe me? About audience capture? No, 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 that I'm like, because there's like, there's two, there's two ways, and I can understand, especially at, at this point, because of how different we are, especially politically. Uh, like, you can either think I'm asking you questions because I'm interested, or you think I'm asking you questions because I'm trying to get like a dunk for my audience to like, on your No, I, I think, right now, I think you're genuinely interested in this. This is like a... Okay, yeah, gotcha, all right, just curious, okay. So, this is like a problem that I have from my perspective when people usually say this thing like, oh, we just need to like, um, I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. That's like a really common thing that I hear a lot. Okay. Um, I think that just asking questions and doing your own research, I think that those are two things that are actually really good. I think those are amazingly good things to do. But the issue that I run into is that every time people talk about like doing their own research or asking questions, they don't actually do any research. They just kind of like listen to like a, like a podcast person or they just like take somebody's word for it, or they watch like maybe one YouTube video that's like highly conspiratorial. What's your definition of research? Like academic articles? Um, sure, like like uh, like reading a variety of articles, um, like getting a variety of news sources, like seeing like, well, what is the mainstream? What does the alternative media have to say? What does a historian have to say? What does an expert have to say? Um, what do people on the ground have to say? Like getting like a variety of sources based on something. That's what I do. I, I, I professionally interview people. I interview people on the street. I have debates with people regularly, people like you, mm -hmm. uh, people who believe in antidepressants. I, I, taken a lot of different information. I challenge my beliefs consistently way more than the average person does. Sure. I guess my question is like in regards to, because I, the, the thing that obviously every, is blowing up for everybody is like the Holocaust related stuff. Um, if people want to be critical of the Holocaust, I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, do we just have to believe every figure like without anything else? Like, is that really how it's supposed to go? Doesn't that seem kind of shitty? Um, and I agree that it could seem kind of shitty, but like, have you ever done any like actual real additional research on the Holocaust? where you're like breaking open a book or like watching like yeah, a documentary. Yeah, I've read books, I've watched a lot of documentaries. I cross reference the stuff I learned in school and different historians. There's even a lot of people that, that say that, I'll talk about a World War II historian that I read and then people be like, that's a bot historian, you need to read this guy. And then I'll check out this video from a different religion. You have to, yeah, I do. So, okay, so then here, so here's like another hard question. And if you don't want to answer any of these, by the way, you don't have to, okay? So I'm not trying to like make you like blah, blah, blah. Um, do you think that like, um, I'm just trying to, cause I know where Fuentes is believes on this. Do you think that like 6 million Jews like actually died? Do you think that number is massively overinflated or that it's about right? Or like, do you have any opinions on like number of people that have died in the Holocaust? Okay, here's my answer because I don't want to get put on a no fly list. Sure. But Wait, There's never no mind. Way. You don't even have to answer. No, I'll answer, 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 answer. Okay, I, I don't good. want to get a no file. But like, I, I don't. I, but what I can confidently say is there's there's no way to know the like if it's gas chambers, how are you going to be able to count who's counting six million corpses? It's impossible. There's no way to actually track that. Just like in any other war, in any uh, 
complete genocide. There's no way to actually know how many people it is. And just the fact that they say it's six million, no more, no less, is is a very weird number. And the fact that like you're called a Holocaust denier, if you even question that number, it sets off alarm bells in my head. So it could be a lot more, it could be less, but like actually six million, there's absolutely, especially mm -hmm. if it's gas chambers, there's no way to know that. Who's doing the tally marks? Okay, so this is a, okay, so this is a good example of what I'm talking about. So I think that that question is a really good question but I think that that's like the very first question that you would ask. So then my question would be, do you know how they tallied up the dead people? Or have you not looked into like even that most bait? Because I'm only going by earlier, you said you'd watch documentaries and you'd read multiple books and you'd consulted multiple historians. Do you know how they came up with the numbers of how many people died during the Holocaust? When it comes to, to World War II, there's different information for, for all of this. I've heard every single side. Okay, but like, doesn't it seem like that should probably be like a pretty basic like answer in terms of like well how do we know how many people died during the holocaust right like it feels like that would be like the first thing that a historian would probably go over right world war ii to my understanding is the most studied historical event in all of human history bar none world war ii is the most studied event a lot of historians it's still relatively modern you know getting into like uh, lots of sophisticated record keeping um a lot of different actors involved. Like World War II is insanely well studied. Do you really think that that six million number is just like pulled out of nowhere and nobody's really thought about it? Of course, people thought about it, but like even now, just article I pulled up, it's like they're saying, um, and this is encyclopedia.org. It says towards the end of the war, Nazis attempted to destroy much of the documentation, and of course, there's there's so many conflicting ideas, and there's so many different personal interests with all these countries. The entire world was remapped after World War II. There's just I don't think there's any way to, to wait. Ever hold know. on. The entire world was not remapped after World War II. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but all of Europe was remapped. All of Europe uh, was not remapped after World War II. Pretty, pretty sure most of the original border. Now there were a couple of countries that got um, cut up in the southeast, but it's not like France and, and and Germany and the UK and like Italy and all these countries like redrew all of their fucking borders. Okay, a good part of Europe was remapped after. My my point is that there's there were so many different interest from all these different countries there's i i don't think i i i can't be convinced by any like what historian everybody has their own personal interest who who could you trust when from what nation everybody has different biases when it comes to this who could you actually trust when it comes to this a consensus of historians working across multiple countries to to like figure out what's going on right and then the alex jones people will say like okay but a Historians from all different countries are trying to push the globalist agenda, so they're going to push one specific narrative. There's yeah, but the Alex no Jones people. Know. How many of those people are like speaking German and then digging into historical archives to figure out like what happened historically? You know, during World War II. Like, are these real people that have done real research, or are these people that are like screaming about like a uh, Twitter post that they saw? Right? Like, wouldn't you weight that differently? Like, a lot of World War II historians, especially those who deal with the Holocaust, it's, it's kind of like doing, like, moral philosophy. Like, they speak German. Like, nobody will take you seriously talking about deontology. You, you can't read Kant, like, in the native language, right? And it's the same thing, too, I think, for a lot of World War II researchers. Like, a lot of these people will, will actually read German because they want to read the original documents relating to a lot of the historical events that they're going over. And you would compare somebody that's, like, digging through archives to, like, Alex Jones, who's going on, like, Twitter headlines, who's never seen an original World War II document or read a primary source about any of this probably in his entire life. Or, or, or like, yeah. I guess, like a question would be like, what evidence could possibly convince you otherwise? Oh, and then also, I would be careful here. As weird as this sounds, I wouldn't want to slander Alex Jones here because Alex Jones hates Nazis, and he absolutely would not be okay on board with like the Holocaust revision Wait, stuff. I, I, I'm not slandering Alex Jones. Sure. No, no. Well, I don't want it because it sounds like we're using Alex Jones as an example, something that would deny the Holocaust, and I don't think Alex Jones would. I think Alex Jones is a pretty big uh, Holocaust hey, I'm, believer. I'm not even denying the Holocaust. I know the Holocaust happened. Just the, the baseline point is that. Well, but your idea is that six million. Sure. Do you think the Dresden bombings were about as bad as the Holocaust? Uh, no. Or have you heard not. that talking about? Okay, because that's the talking about. Like, it's not. It's never a full on denial. That's like old school. That's like stupid. Like old Nazism, right? The new neo Nazi talking points are like, well, no, of course the Holocaust happened, but it was probably like a few hundred thousand Jews, not six million. How could you even know the numbers? Could the gas chambers really run that fast? If you were trying to bake six million cookies and you only had eleven ovens working yeah, full yeah. time, where are the smoke clouds? Weren't the doors made out of wood? Right? Every single one of these points is addressed by historians. If you take the time to like read any of it. But it feels like a lot of people don't actually take the time to dig through it. They just say, like, they do their own research and then they don't. I guess, like, ordinarily, it'd be kind of like a whatever meme, like, I don't really care much. But, like, when it seems like anti-Semitic rhetoric in the United States is, like, on a huge upswing. And then, like, you, people like you are kind of, like, being 
responsible for driving more of it. I don't know. I just think it's a little bit sad. And a you little think bit I'm scared. pushing anti-Semitism? Yes, absolutely. What what part of what I said is pushing anti-Semitism? When you say things like, I think that the number of Jews killed during the Holocaust is grossly exaggerated. That's an anti-Semitic talking point. I didn't say, I didn't say it was exaggerated. I'm saying there's no way to actually know. I didn't say that it was it's So you think more, more than, you think more than six million Jews could have been killed? I think it's impossible to strictly determine that it was six million. Okay. I didn't say more or less. Sure, I can tell you why it's anti-Semitic, right? If it's impossible to know, why do we use that number? I mean, it's it's very effective at silencing any anti-Semitism. The, the ADL and all these. Yeah, okay, that's I'm, an anti. I'm being, I'm being, I really don't want to get debanked, but like. The, sure, I know, but I, but that's it. So that talking point is anti-Semitic, right? The idea that Jews are leveraging the Holocaust in order to shield themselves from criticism—that's an anti-Semitic talking point, that's right? That's not an anti. That, that's just true. They they use that. They they use the they use the Holocaust to silence anybody who has any criticism towards uh, Jews, and you don't see any other race. And I. I constantly say that black people should be able to do the same thing with slavery and they don't jews have used that to, to become stronger they use the holocaust to completely prevent that from happening again it's like there's not anti okay hold on firstly it's black people first of all black people do use that okay we just had the whole fucking blm riots okay i don't know if you remember those or not so black people in the united states absolutely do talk about their history as well but i don't know if that was black people that were benefiting off of the okay BLM it was riots. blm but regardless there, okay. were, there was more black violence during blm than there has been in the past okay that's fine years. and there are more people that defend jews than just jewish people right there's white people too right so like like don't do you think i that, defend jews all the time i defend okay. you know, don't I, you think it's possible don't you think it's possible that one of the reasons why they want to like keep reminding people of this is so that you don't like slip back into that anti-Semitic world that Jews exactly. have a yeah, but but now we're you're agreeing. doing it. We're not agreeing. <laughs> you're saying that they're using it as a shield from criticism. I'm saying maybe they're just bringing it up because they're worried that like another Holocaust might happen. I mean, it comes from the same place. They don't want another Holocaust to happen. They've used that to band together and become stronger. No, those are two wildly different claims. Saying How? like, hey, don't forget this because I don't want to get genocided again is a lot different than saying like they're using this to increase their power so that they can have israel be the rightful ruling country of the world those are okay it's it started with that and, and now it's very useful in, in having ultimate power ultimate what is the ultimate power silencing any criticism and shutting people up as soon as they criticize as soon as they say anything yay said defcon 3 i'm gonna go defcon 3 and jewish people and then they completely look at how much power they have now because for so many decades they've said six million six million six million they got to the point where they could just shut you out like that if i were to tweet out like i'm going defcon 3 on black people or trans people you'd you probably get fine. you will be fine hold on first they said slavery stop. was a choice wait wait wait, wait. hold on years ago, Firstly, nothing happened. For, okay first of all no he got a ton of heat for that statement i don't know if you're not he got, a con he got dragged on twitter he didn't get debanked he didn't get all of his he didn't lose his adidas deal he didn't lose every bro he didn't lose his bank yeah account. because that was a he random statement on twitter bro, he lost dumb. his chase bank account is gone before he even made those yay statements he lost the adidas deal sure but the chase shit he was talking shit about that bank way before he made any public statements for it i'm pretty sure he was talking shit entire executive team because they weren't treating him how he wanted to be treated but regardless of that yeah doing no chase bank was after the defcon 3 statement google it go i don't want to do every single story with you okay but google chase bank drops yay and that decision had been made because of comments that he'd made about the that bank and the executives prior to any um weird nazi shit um the adidas deal um i'll admit that the, the adidas deal was lost but the statements that he started making about jews were even more extreme than the statements that he was making about uh black people and slavery so i mean like that's not that surprising i don't think that's because How jews was it more are... saying slavery was a choice did you even li did, have you even listened to kanye's comments about that yes okay what did he mean when he said that saying that when you're enslaved for that long and you continue in that place then then eventually it becomes a choice if you stay enslaved after a certain amount of time. Close, kind of, yeah. What he's saying is that, like, slavery becomes, like, a state of mind, essentially, right? That, like, you can exactly. get Exactly, after locked... a certain amount of time, yeah, you, you get used get, to it. Yeah, you can get locked into these mental patterns, you know? Um, so, those statements... Right. You don't you don't lose your Adidas deal for saying, for talking about any other ethnicity, any other... No, 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 religion. but if he was out here saying, like, black people deserve slavery, or, like, slavery was fake, or I don't think it happened or whatever, or, like, black people should be happy they were enslaved in America because now they got to come and live here when it's way better than living in Africa. If he would have said shit like that, he probably would have gotten you, fucked. You can't equate that to his comment. He said, I'm going to go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. That's, that's not that's all not. he said. He said, I loved Hitler. He said he didn't believe in the Holocaust. He said the Jewish no, people that, control that the was, media. That was after, that was after all of um, all the cancellation. 
Okay. I love Hitler and everything was after the cancellation saying I'm gonna go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people that you th okay let me just I just want this to be entered in the record so when people go and fact check because you're wrong on this I know you're wrong on this but but you I'm can what? you can state it clearly I you think was, you was think the, no no that mistake might have but do you think that I'm gonna go DEFCON 3 on the Jews you think that's the only anti-semitic statement that he made for Adidas to drop him that was the only one that he made because it wasn't but do you but I just want to hear you think if you think that you think that's the only statement that he made what else do you think it was I, I don't remember, but he was doing a lot of weird, like, tweeting and speech. I think, didn't he give that thing in front of the cars? But was that before the Adidas thing? In front of the car, where he's like, I'm not going to say who did it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the red it media, was no, the, the Jews. Red, was nah, that red media, red media was after. That was after. The, the, the DEF CON 3 tweet was the first one. Okay. Did he say, did he say, like, I can say anti-Semitic and Adidas won't drop me? Was that before Adidas dropped him? That was before Adidas dropped him, yeah. Okay. Um, I would have to go back and look at it, but I know he made more statements than just that one tweet. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> well, anyway, what else is that? Where have you been? Have you been like traveling back and forth between here and LA a ton lately? No, I um. No, I've been uh, been in Miami. If we uh, I want to talk about this eventually, but like. Yeah, you don't have to reveal anything. You're good. You're good. Yeah, it's um. There's a lot that I want to talk about eventually, but I just don't want to um. It was, it's really weird, like, uh, meeting him after, after all these years. Listening to his music for so long? Yeah, and all that. It's, there, there's so much that I want to say, but I don't want to, um, you know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it goes, it's, he, he's, uh, definitely, there's nobody, there's nobody like that I've ever met. What, do you think he's autistic? Jesus, um, he's something. Wait, what do you do? Are you allowed to say where you live now in Miami? Or like, I moved to Miami Beach, so that's why I was just curious. I don't know how. Yeah, I live in Brickle. Oh, gotcha. Okay, you're something. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't know, or manic or something. I don't know. He's something. <laughs> he's something. But he thinks people only say that to him to try to lock his mind away. So I don't know. Maybe A lot I'm... of people they, they they do try to handle him. They he tweeted out like how they were trying to take away his children. I've never seen that amount of pressure. He's been like very transparent about how Hollywood tries to control you. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have. Chappelle's talked about that a lot too, right? That was his whole thing for leaving and everything. Yeah, did you know, even notice when he did that SNL speech, he gave out that statement before, like, just making sure he was reading that piece of paper saying, uh, before I get into this, I love Jewish people. I'm not a bad person. That was a joke. I don't think that was a joke. <laughs> that... I, I think he said it like it, like it was a joke in a Chappelle way, because everything he says sounds funny, but I think that was genuine. He, that was him covering his ass. No. That was genuinely a joke because he kind of sort of almost covered for Ye a bit during that uh, stand-up routine. That was definitely a joke. Yeah, did for he? sure, for sure. What do you say that that covered him? Um, did well, like he was, part? he was, yeah, he was making jokes about like uh, I'm not saying every Jew is blah blah blah, but if you go there, they might all be Jew. Like he was making like a lot of kind of like backhanded jokes like that. Like I don't think he was 100 percent in disagreement with. He also wasn't completely defending him either it was he was just made mostly doing like observational humor he did a good job of playing both sides and getting the liberals in new york city to clap for him sure okay um hold on rtba oh fuck i need an account you do you have to copy paste what you what, what do you remember to say i don't know okay um <clears throat> okay. all right man enjoy your factory game thank you uh, what, 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 you, what time do you think you're going to be done streaming? I don't know. Melinda doesn't get back to like really, really, really late, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But uh, I'll, I can, I'll shoot your text when she's here if you want to go out. We'll see if we can do something. Go for All right, it. All right, cool. Make sure to use a good uh, picture of me when this, uh, when your editor clips this <laughs> Tell August. You know? He's listening. Okay, August, yeah. Yeah, yeah. August, picture. like, he's going to make a picture of me looking like completely like manic. <laughs> he, like, Sneeko is anti-Semitic? Ah! I don't sure. think I've said anything anti-Semitic. I, I, I'm genuinely not an anti-Semitic person. Um, I know you. you know, I know you're saying you're not, but like just just this one more time I, for like maybe three people in your audience, I guess, to get this understood or whatever. The reason why holo, like Holocaust revisionism is considered anti-Semitic is because people usually claim that the Holocaust is either grossly exaggerated or entirely fabricated as a means for. That's fine. I don't care. But you're playing defense. Run. You when should you, care. No, you should when care. You say if, things if, if like, you're going to call me anti-Semitic. When you, you when you say things like, how could we know the numbers? Right. You're essentially. You can, I, but you could say that about any war. 
Okay, any, hold on. No, you can't say that about anywhere because there's census genocide. numbers. There's registrations. There's logs of people entering and leaving camps. There's records of train cars full of people. There's census data from before and after. There's reports from family. There's all sorts of ways to track people. They're not just like throwing darts at a board. There's tons of different ways. And if you do a little bit of research, you can stumble upon all the different ways that they track people. If you really History. care about it. History is written by the winner. No, that's not true. History is written by historians. That's why there are negative things recorded in history about the United States of America, even though the United States of America has won the vast majority of its wars. That's why in the United States, even though we're the where's victors- the, Where's the Nazi historian? Where's the Nazi historian who was part of that and then has now written logs about what happened? They, they got wiped out or they're in Argentina. They haven't gotten written, wiped out. There's plenty of people. David Irving was a huge writer trying to vindicate fucking Hitler's record. And that dude ended up going to court trying to sue people over calling him a Nazi and he lost on the facts when his shit got reviewed. So no, there are historians even today and he was a guy that dug through the archives and went through records and read original fucking shit in order to figure out what he's saying. No, there's tons of people today. There's tons of historians. Like a lot of topics are debated hotly among these academic communities. Even if people know, try just, to- Just listen to how even if like just me questioning the amount, I get labeled anti-Semitic by you. Just questioning <clears throat> the amount of people It's because- It's anti-Semitic. The problem is that you don't understand like- you just don't understand what asking the question is like. Like, you, you understand you can do a lot of, like, damage by asking certain types of questions. Asking a question is anti-Semitic. Okay, if I were to walk around and I were to ask is people, Is that what like, you're saying? Are, are you saying asking a question is anti-Semitic? It can be part of it, yeah. If I were that's, to- That's absolutely insane, and that's that's how free speech dies. If I were to walk it, it, around, if I were to questioning. walk- Questioning. No, 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 no. You're the one killing freedom of speech, okay? Because Where? you're not asking real questions. You're playing word games. Because if you were asking real questions, like how do they know how many Jews died, you wouldn't even ask me that. That's a Google search away. That's literally two minutes of reading, but you haven't even done that. So you're not really asking questions. You're making points, and you're disguising those points with question marks. And that's why people are claiming it's anti-Semitic. Free speech no, dies you're, not you're when we can't ask you're, questions. Said, it's when people pretend to ask questions and bad faith actors destroy the discourse. Then we can't have no. free speech anymore. Yeah, that's you're what's happening. You're assuming by me asking a question that I'm making a statement that is grossly exaggerated. That's never but what you I are. And well, okay. I genuinely, I genuinely do don't you think, believe that. Okay, do you think that it's the case that maybe way more Jews died in the in the Holocaust? That's possible. Okay, what do you think is more likely? More Jews or less Jews? If Jewish people are using this story to drum up support for Israel and Jewish people across the world, would they exaggerate it or would they underplay it? I don't think there's a way to know. And then I am not leaning on either side. Okay. All right, well, anything else you want to go over? Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay. W Jesus. Merry w Christmas. Jesus and Destiny And you know Shack. what? Hey, happy Hanukkah if you celebrate it, okay? <laughs> Have fun, buddy. Uh, yeah, happy Hanukkah. Behind. <laughs> okay, see you later, bud. All right, bye. We love Hitler. Yeah, Jerry, you got to go. Bye. You're banned. <sighs> I'm not doing it. Jews, type a one in the chat right now. I know there's Jews watching. I don't think anything I said was that bad. <laughs>